The Elephant and the Rider, or How to Influence Yourself and Others to Change. There is a tremendously good book that I highly recommend that you get hold of, and that's Switch by Chip and Dan Heath. In it, they use this analogy of the elephant and the rider to describe how we can help ourselves influence change more effectively and more efficiently. There are two parts of the brain that we're interested in when we're talking about influence. That is your conscious brain and your limbic brain. And borrowing an analogy used by University of Virginia psychologist Jonathan Haidt in his wonderful book, The Happiness Hypothesis, where Haidt says that our emotional side is an elephant and our rational side is its rider. Perched atop the elephant, the rider holds the reins and seems to be the leader, but the rider's control is precarious because the rider is so small relative to the elephant. Any time the six-ton elephant and the rider disagree about which direction to go, the rider is going to lose. It's completely overmatched. Most of us are all too familiar with situations in which our elephant overpowers our rider. You've experienced this if you've ever overeaten, slept in, said something you regretted, procrastinated, tried to quit smoking and failed, skipped the gym, gotten angry and lost your temper, refused to speak up in a meeting because you were fearful, and so on. Good things no one's keeping score. Or are they? For those of you with a very large ego and oozing with pride, you're already disagreeing with me. Yes, it's possible for the rider to have control over the elephant. No doubt you've seen circus elephants and even know that they are trained from young by being tied to a small stick. Later in life, they are controlled with a nasty hook wielded by their trainer. I've met people who've been similarly trained from young. Their parents kept a very tight control and very, very strict discipline. In later life, they are highly disciplined and keep a tight lid on their emotions, stiff upper lip and all that. Sure, it happens. All of those I've met are very sad and very lonely people. The elephant and rider are constantly in tension. The weakness of the elephant, our emotional and instinctive side, is well known. It's lazy and skittish, often looking for the quick payoff, that one scoop of ice cream more, over the longer term payoff of being slim. When change efforts fail, it's usually the elephant's fault. Since the kinds of change we want typically involve short-term sacrifices for long-term payoffs, we cut back on expenses today to yield a better balance sheet next year. We avoid ice cream today for a better body next year. Changes often fail because the rider simply can't keep the elephant on the road long enough to reach the destination. The rider's intention to delay gratification is outmatched by the desire for this just this once payoff. The elephant's hunger for instant gratification is the opposite of the rider's strength, which is the ability to think long term, to plan, to think beyond the moment. All those things my pet dog can't do. But what may surprise you is that the elephant also has enormous strengths and that the rider has crippling weaknesses. The elephant isn't always the bad guy. Emotion is the elephant's turf. Love and compassion, sympathy and loyalty. That fierce instinct you have to protect your kids against harm, that's the elephant. That spine stiffening you feel when you need to stand up for yourself, that's the elephant. And even more important, if you're contemplating a change, the elephant is the one who gets things done. To make progress toward a goal, whether it's noble or crass, requires the energy and drive of the elephant. And this strength is the mirror image of the rider's great weakness, spinning his wheels. The rider tends to overanalyze and overthink things. Chances are, you know people with rider problems. Your friend, 
who can agonise for 20 minutes about what to eat for dinner. Your colleague who can brainstorm about new ideas for hours but can't ever seem to make a decision. And there we have a problem. We think the rider's in control. See, when rider and elephant disagree about which way to move, you have a problem. The rider can get his way temporarily. He can tug on the reins hard enough to get the elephant to submit. Anytime you use willpower, you're doing exactly that. But the rider can't win a tug of war with a huge animal for long. He simply gets exhausted. Self-control is an exhaustible resource. And this is a critical realisation, because when we talk about self-control, we don't just mean the narrow sense of the word, as in the willpower needed to fight a vice, smoking, cookies or alcohol. We're talking about a broader kind of self-supervision. Think of the way your mind works when you're giving negative feedback to an employee, or assembling a new bookshelf, or learning a new dance. You are careful and deliberate with your words or movements. It feels like there's a supervisor on duty. That is self-control as well. And just how long can you carry the elephant? Hey, see, here's why this matters for change. When people try to change things, they usually tinker with behaviours that have become automatic. And changing those behaviours requires careful supervision by the rider. The bigger the change you're suggesting, the more it will sap people's self-control. And when people exhaust their self-control, what they're exhausting are the mental muscles needed to think creatively, to focus, to inhibit their impulses, and to persist in the face of frustration or failure. In other words, they're exhausting precisely the mental muscles they need to make a big change. So when you hear people say that change is hard because people are lazy or resistant, that's just flat wrong. In fact, the opposite is true. Change is hard because people wear themselves out. And that's the second surprise about change. What looks like laziness is often exhaustion. We need both the elephant and the rider to agree which way to go. And each of us has an emotional elephant side and a rational rider side. You've got to reach both. And you've also got to clear the way for them to succeed. In short, you must do three things. According to Chip and Dan Heath, who wrote the fabulous book Switch, you need to direct the rider, motivate the elephant, and shape the path for them both to travel. So what do we need to do? To direct the rider... Three things. We follow the bright spots, script the critical moves, and point to the destination. Following the bright spots is, is finding out what's working well and cloning it. Most people, when they're looking for change, they're looking for the wrong thing. They're looking for what's not working, and let's try and get rid of it. No, we don't want to do that. We want to find what is working well and use that. Clone it to make it all happen. Then we script the critical moves. Stop thinking big picture. Stop constantly selling people big picture only. We need to think in terms of specific one-off behaviours. What small behaviour can be changed? And we point to the destination. So we keep in mind the big picture and change is much easier when you know where you're going and why it's worth going there. So we've directed the rider, now we need to motivate the elephant. And motivating the elephant is about finding the feeling, shrinking the change and growing the person. Finding the feeling because knowing something isn't enough. Knowing that you need to change is not enough. Knowing that you need to get out and exercise is not enough. We've got to feel like it. Very often you'll hear people say, I don't feel like it. That's because it's true. They don't feel like it. What we want to do is make them feel something. If that's for you to change yourself, you need to feel something. A benefit that you feel. And shrink the change, break the change down into smaller and smaller chunks so that it doesn't scare the elephant. These big changes, 
big efforts scare us because they seem so overwhelmingly difficult or big or impossible. But it's when we break it down into single, tiny little, minuscule steps, micro steps, we can, we can do that. And do the next, and do the next. And before you know it, you've gotten there. So when you're climbing a big mountain, it's not looking at the mountain. It's taking one step in front of the other and keep on keeping on. And thirdly, we're growing the person. We want to cultivate a sense of identity and instill a growth mindset. Two things here. The, the mindset of growth allows us to think that we can be better, we can change. Whereas many people have a fixed mindset and believe they're stuck with wherever they are, stuck with their bad habits, stuck with their personality. And cultivating a sense of identity, the new identity that you want, you want people to believe they're part of something bigger. When we've directed the rider and motivated our elephant, the third thing we need to make sure we do is shape the path. By doing that, we're going to tweak the environment, build habits and rally the herd. Tweaking the environment is all about changing the situation because when we change the situation, the behavior changes. So change the situation. There are many examples of when you can do that to make it easier for you to change what you used to do into a new behavior. Changing your environment can be as simple as changing the way your office desk is facing or not going to one place that you always used to follow through with that particular behavior. Building habits. Why do we build habits? Well, when behavior is habitual, it's free. It doesn't tax the rider. It doesn't feel like it costs anything. It's effortless. So look for ways to encourage habits, setting action triggers and using checklists as examples. And the third thing is rallying the herd. Behavior is contagious. Help it spread. When we see other people doing something, there is this great social power that influences us to copy and mimic, or vice versa. If we're doing something and somebody else mimics us, it causes us to reinforce that behavior. So, we have three things to help our elephant and rider go through a change together. We direct the rider, motivate the elephant, and shape the path. So when we're directing the rider, we're looking at ways in which we can follow the bright spots, find what's working, script the critical moves, all whilst pointing to the destination. Motivating our elephant is remembering to find the feeling, shrinking the change and growing the person. And when we shape the path for both of them to go on, we're tweaking the environment to make it easier, building habits so that the behavior becomes free and rallying the herd so that we've got the contagion of behavior and the support of others. I'm Dr. John Kenworthy. If you would like to gain your leadership advantage, give me a shout. Bye for now.